Hello, my name is Gabriel Roberts. I'm with Roberts Bushcraft. Today we're going to be reviewing the Katoma Enhanced Bed Net System. It's made for use over a cot or you can do it on the ground, either way you like. It comes with a rain fly, also a ground cloth. We don't have that today, so we're just using a uh, silicone treated nylon sheet and a stuff case here. So let's jump right into it and uh, show you what we got. Here it is all packed up, 13 by 13 by 3 without rain fly, but it has the rain fly in here, so it's more like 13 by 13 by 5. Dad picked this up, asking price was $45, so great deal on that. And uh, let's set it up. A couple of neat things on this bag. You have these loops on the outside you can hook up and basically attach this so to the outside of a backpack makes it a little more versatile than just molly you can hang that up to like a tree limb or whatever you want got a uh, couple of zippers on this side very clean nice and smooth so let's get it set up I'm gonna go ahead and lay out this ground cloth, this, or this sheet, whatever you want to call it. Laying it out. I'm gonna get that in my pocket. There we go. And that is big enough to cover the Katoma up. And there you go. So let's throw the bed net out and we'll see what we got. So we're going to show you the contents of this Katoma bed net system. Like I said, a very smooth zipper. Now. You want to make sure you hold hold on to that bed net. Now, right now, it's not such a big deal since you have that strap on it. After you take that strap off, there, you want to make sure you got a good hold on that thing because it will definitely hit you where you do not want to be hit, <laughs> and it does not feel good. Test of manhood. <laughs> so, rain fly. Poles and stakes. One pole. We'll set that right to the side here. I'm going to eventually make a stuff sack for those poles because they do want to Koala let the pole power. magic happen when you take them out of that bag. So I'm going to make a, and they also rub, I've discovered they rub up against the bed net and the rain fly inside the carry pouch. So I'm going to make something to stop that from happening. All right, there you go. That's all the contents. You have the bed net system on your left. Right here. Has the rain fly. These are the stakes that they sent with them. Very nice. Decent aluminum as well. And then you have the center pole that holds the rain fly up. So, very nice system, pretty compact. Weighs four and a half pounds with everything here. First off, I'd like to show you something that I think is kind of funny, but extremely true. Right here on this warning label, it says it will hit you in the face. Again, like I said earlier, it will hit you other places as well. <laughs> so, be careful about that. There's a uh, center strap that goes across here. You just want to take that off. Again, you want to make sure you got a good hold on it because it will pop. And now, hold away from me. There you go. Pop mm -hmm. right out. And then you just bring it over, fold it out like you normally would. And the other thing. And honestly, there is no slow way of doing that. A lot of people just throw it out. You can hold it away and let it pop. Either way, there is no way to slowly open it up. When it goes, it goes. The poles are 0.134 diameter pole-treated fiberglass. 
So the Katoma bed net system has two doors, one on each side. So four zippers. And a lot of people might not know what these are. They're made like a loop, so you could run a ridge line through them. What they're designed to do, just like little pull tabs, so you're not grabbing your bug net here and ripping it up when you go to open your door. So just pull this back and unzip just like so. So real quick here, I'm just going to show you how to tie both of these, both of these doors up. You use these tie outs right here to secure the door. And uh, just like you're starting to tie your shoelace, you can just secure it down real good. And then that's very simple to undo. Just pull one side and it comes back out. So we've got a 20 inch foot height and a 25 inch foot width. It's 90 inches long with a 26 inch head height and a 33 inch head width. And it's a total floor area of 15.7 square feet. Now these points right here, you have uh, four buckles on this thing, one in each corner, and then you have a middle loop, all made to interface with your cot. And the big GP tents, in extreme heat, the walls of that would get rolled up and to allow airflow. And then obviously when you have airflow, you have bugs. So you wouldn't want bugs all over you while you're sleeping. So they made this thing, and then you clip it right onto your cot good night sleep with no mosquitoes <laughs> you have one inside mesh pocket for gear storage and this thing is also treated with a bug or insect repellent very nice it has a bathtub floor the thing about this though is that it's not seam sealed so you have a bathtub floor that does not have it's not waterproof so at the seams it's Waterproof, waterproof floor, not waterproof at the seams. So it's kind of useless in my opinion. So what we're going to have to do is take some seam grip and go all along this seam, seal it up. So here's me laying in this thing. I'm six foot two. I weigh 225, and I'm pushing the limits of this thing. Now you do get an extra little bit of headspace when you put the pole on. It gives you just a little bit, but not a whole lot. And still, this thing is, a, like I said, um, it's a pretty tight fit. No, I do have just a little bit more headroom. I could scoot back. I mean, the net's on my face a little bit, but I can make it a good night's sleep in here. Now, I sleep, sleep straight. My dad, he sleeps on the side. And normally, when you sleep on your side, you're a little more curled up. So if I were to sleep on my side, I would have a little bit more room. Mm -hmm. Sleeping on my side does give me some extra space, so I could do that. This is also treated with a bug repellent or insect repellent, so very nice. So that's me inside of it. Like I said, I'm 6'2", so that gives you a good little idea there. But I can still make it work. These are Eastern Aluminum tent poles. Or actually, tent pole. And if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know not to just throw your pole on the ground and let the elastic magic happen. Don't bust the casings. And then you just go through it. There's a little corner right there. A little 45. And it goes on. So just be aware of that. And you just continue to go through this thing. Put them on. Your rain fly pole goes on top of this, not under this. When I first saw this, I thought it went through it. Do not do that. It won't work. Put it on top. So you have these tent pole clips right here. Bring it right up. Clip it on. One on the other side as well. There you go. Now we'll throw the rain fly on. Dad had to take the old seam tape off and put some new on.
Another issue that I'm running into with this particular rainfly is the seam tape. As you can see, it's just about worthless. I mean, it's very little effort pulling out of oh, that whole section came undone. This is peeling up here. I'm going to have to address this before I use it. That is definitely going to allow rain to get through there and soak me and everything that's inside of this tent. So I feel like this is all going to have to come off. That is, I mean, that's, really, that's coming off with no effort at all. So, I think I'm just going to heat all of this up. And take it off and put new seam tape on it. I think that's going to be the best thing to do. Probably use some alcohol to clean off the old residue. Maybe even use a... Uh, cloth of some type to heat this glue up or the adhesive up and see if I can get as much as this of this old adhesive off as I can so when I go to put the new on it'll have a good clean surface to stick to pretty much everywhere I look on this rain fly we've got bad tape And again, that's coming up with no effort. No effort at all. So there's really no use in trying to test the waterproofness of this because I already know it's gonna fail. And some of the tape looks like it's okay. And rather than taking all of the tape off, which I probably should do, but Rather than taking it all off, I may just go through and remove the bad sections, cut it, and put new tape on top of it. But by doing that, you've got two surfaces. And that's where those two surfaces join. you got the potential for water to get through. So one, ideally, one continuous piece of tape from start to finish is the way to go. So we'll see how this plays out. But I suspect, well, that looks like two pieces of tape there. And that is, that's that one piece. on top of the ribbon here. That's coming up way easy. All right, I've got my work cut out for me. See how that changed colors. The glue, the adhesive, has melted and is here to the polyurethane coating. Now we'll slide on down to the next section. You see the difference in color here. This has not been applied yet, and this has. Anytime you're working with this tape and seaming it or heating it up, you always want to have a bandana or something in between the iron 
in the tape. Otherwise it's going to melt it and then it'll melt your rain fly as well. So this will allow it to transfer the heat without it sticking. I'm going to start back up here. Just let it set for a second. I usually peel it back just a little bit to make sure that I'm still on track. In my opinion, this is a whole lot easier. It's just less tedious than going over every seam with seam grip. Covers a larger area faster and it seals it. I do have to spend a little more time along the edges because I don't have a roller to get down along uh, where the seams are put together. I think they roll it as they heat it at the factory. So you do have to spend a little more time along that edge, make sure that it's down. But this is the way to go. Whatever side that you want to be your front door, you need to have this elastic facing it. Alrighty, so I want this to be my front door, so we'll throw that over the back and that up in the front. So the reason why we didn't stake this down initially is because we knew we were going to have to do this. In the middle, and this is also how you recognize your middle on this tarp, has a tab with a grommet on it and it goes right under the pole like that. Clip it right under and then we'll do the other side and we'll stake it down. So we've got two tent poles, or tent stakes actually here, and all you do is these loops on the back. This one is close to the zipper. And this is how you get this tent to stand up on its own. Just a little ways in, just enough to keep it up. And then we'll do the uh, same thing on this side, opposite from the zipper. Just enough to stand it up. And then we'll do the front. And then we'll straighten it out and tighten it out some more. So Dad has taking the pleasure of sewing on some paracord loops. Somebody, the last owner of this, had ripped a hole somehow in this rain fly, and they were sticking the stakes straight through where they had made the hole. And that's pretty ludicrous, actually. That's continuously ripping the rain fly as you're using it. Every time you're staking it out, you're ripping it more and more and more, until eventually the whole thing is just going to be disintegrated in that little tiny area. So, Dad went ahead and sewed it up, through a paracord loop on there and now you can just stake that right out and then he's also done that on a lot of other sides of this tent on the opposite side on the corners and on the back and here was where the other door guy out loop was ripped out where he had to sew back up right here as well so now we can just stick that right to there and stake it down Now this is how this tent or this bed net system would look normally. You see uh, staked out. Now dad identified an area that would be a problem in the event of a rainstorm. So I'm going around and I'm tightening down the rain fly. And I noticed that you know the, the corners here just kind of sag and droop a little. And I've adjusted the rain fly quite a few times. And Really, any way or anywhere I, I move one point, part of it will tighten, the other part will sag. I've noticed on the main body here that none of these seams are sealed. 
this can be problematic if we've got any type of rain falling. Rain's gonna run off, hit these seams, and it's gonna get wet inside of this. So I think what I'm gonna do is seam grip the seam here and add a paracord loop here to bring this out and tighten it up. And by doing so, that's going to get the rain fly up and off of the body and out. So the rain will actually run off onto the ground and not onto this. So I've sewn on a paracord loop here. And this is in between the stakeout point, which is where you attach the rainfly pole. So this is the center of the head. I've sewn on a stakeout point or loop, paracord loop here. And that is the loop to the front door. Now I also have to do that repair as well. Probably gonna put some seam grip behind this just to give it a little extra reinforcement. But you can see the difference. Uh, the rain is gonna run, come down and actually run off onto the ground and not actually onto this main tent body. That's what it looks like without my stake. And there it is with it. Now it's a little hard to get this on camera just right. It looks like this is touching this body, but there's that rain is actually going to run right straight off and not hit this at all. There's enough room there. Make a few more minor adjustments to tighten it out more. I think I've got a winner here. And over here on the foot side, that's the back door stake and the paracord loop that I just sewed there and this is the center of the foot and here's the rain fly pole here so by adding this extra loop i've given more room and more clearance for better airflow in here by bringing this out getting it off the ground just a little bit and it helps tighten things up I think it's a pretty good mod. The bed net is exposed. And in heavy rainfall, that is would obviously be a problem. Seeing as the bathtub floor is not waterproof or seam sealed, the rain would run right off the side and onto the bed net, possibly flooding the floor. So what he's done is sewn some paracord loops right here. And he's done the same thing on the other side. And the whole goal of this is so you can take some paracord just real simply tie you up a small little knot here just take that pull it out with a tent stick just like that now and then we'll do that on the other side as well and one thing that we could do to maximize the efficiency of this, bring this out just a little bit more. Stick it down. So now no rain is going to get onto your bed net underneath. It's going to run right off the side. And you'll be nice and good. So then we'll get to the other side and do the exact same thing. So here's the system guided out. You can see, just tie some paracord on it and put it up and stake it down. There's two guy points on this. One at each end of the system. 
just some small black loops there. One point that I forgot to mention earlier, you want to line this pole centered with the rain fly, so about right here along with this seam. Somewhere in there and that'll keep you a good rain fly set up and shed water nicely. So this has Velcro, just holding this flat back. YKK zippers all over this thing. Love those. Just take this, bring it on over. And now, again, like with the bug nut, you have this webbing right here so you can tie this door back. We'll do that real quick just to demonstrate. Just like you're tying your shoelace. Same thing down here. See, it can be easily done from the inside. And that is the backside door. And this uh, vestibule is made to put your Philby main ruck and all the rest of your components. And it can easily fit that. So, was it that back up? And here you have it. This is the system with the rain fly set up and it all staked down. So, I like this so far and I'm even considering getting myself one. I really do like this, especially for summertime camping. It can be extremely useful. When you want a, when you want more space in a bivy, but you don't necessarily want to carry a whole heavy tent. This is a great option. And if you're a stealth camper, low profile, it's below my waist. Well, let me get down here level with it. Still below my waist. So out of sight, out of mind. Very nice. Love the color too, Coyote Brown. We're gonna show you one more thing about this system that we absolutely love. A little known fact about this system is that you actually can use it without its bed net. All you do is unclip the ends, put the poles back down into the rain fly, and pull the bed net out. And here you go. If you want to go a little lighter weight, just carry a ground cloth and a in the rain fly. Have it staked out just as normal. There you go. Lightweight option. So without the bed net, I have plenty of room inside of this. I uh, space two feet probably at my face, or uh, at my head here. At about half a foot down there at my feet, so I could scoot back just a little bit. And there you go. Now I actually believe that two people could fit inside of this. We One would have to be scooted over in the vestibule area, and then one more in the middle here. But I think two people could fit in here. We might have to do a little video of that here in the future. So I'll show you the vents now. So now that we have the bed net out, I can easily show you this vent. This is mesh on the inside, so we're going to have to go on the outside to get it propped up. But this allows the airflow in and out of the tent. So now all you do is come over here to the back side of the tent, or the rain fly. Rip it right up. You have this, what seems like a plastic rod. This could actually be fiberglass. Inside of this uh, sleeve, and it's also got Velcro on it. And all you do, with this pulled out, you just hook that little Velcro piece right there. You can show you like right there. Just hook it on, and it pushes it out, and that allows for a little bit of airflow, uh, releasing the buildup of condensation inside of there. So I'm going to show you how to fold this thing back up. This is the bed net. The rain fly is pretty self-explanatory. All you got to do is just fold that one up like normal. So, 
you've got it in half, bring these pieces together, fold it like you would a suitcase, you bring this side, push this in, and that naturally folds these over. And then you just keep going with that. And now you straighten it all out, kind of even everything back up. And now here's the part that a lot of people will get confused on. They, uh, they get all crazy with this and it really feels like you're gonna break it. And it truly does. But <laughs> people go yelling, the face is turning red. All you do is push this together and it starts to turn. And now what I like to do is keep my thumb out so I can, it is tough. And then you, if I can, ah, come on. Again, it's, it's not easy, but you fold it around. If you can get your thumb up and hold it like that, and then you can come through, grab it and fold it down. And it's meant to do that. It's nice and tight. You hold it just like that. And then you would go get your strap, put this over. I'll run that so quick. So hang it on to this. Just want to throw that strap on over. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure all the material is fairly even. And then you just tighten it down. And there you go. It's not going anywhere. All right, I've hunkered down for the night. It's only supposed to get down in the low 50s. So all I need is the sleeping mat that I'm on and the poncho liner. Now one of the modifications we didn't show earlier today that I have made, see if we can get this. And I might have to show it tomorrow or maybe even at home once we get back. But I added a ridge line inside here. And... I've got it where you can adjust the tension with a prussic knot. You can add, tighten that up as you need it. And I've got it attached at the end of the tent, up here on the tent poles. Going to be, you can see the knot there. There's a knot for it there. And I used an old pole clip that I had from another tent system that we took apart. Let's see if we can see it. I'm just going to have to show it in the morning. It's just not going to come in focus. Anyhow, I took a couple pole clips from an old tent that we had. And I always save things like that. So, I used that to help create this ridge line. Prepare for it to see there. Tom was not designed to cook in. There's really not a whole lot of room under the rain fly to get a stove in. It really is kind of small. Now, if you take the bed net out, you'll have more room to work with. But for now, I'm having to cook outside of the rain fly. And here's my pillow for tonight. Five quart collapsible canteen. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn in. We'll catch back up with you in the morning. Alright, folks. It is morning. And I had a great night sleeping here. Very little condensation build up We're down here by the river. It's moist down here anyway. We had a pretty good amount of airflow. Cut down on the condensation a lot. I think uh, I'll go ahead and get some coffee. Pack up and get out of here today. So here's my ridge line modification. This is an old pole clip from a tent that we threw away. It's deteriorated over the years. So before we throw them away, we always 
you know, kind of scavenge whatever parts that we can off of it. You know, I think we might be able to use something here and there. In this case, you know, it worked out good. This is a pole clip. You know, simply clips onto the pole. And what I've done is taken a little bit of paracord and I've run it through there. And all you do is clip it on the pole there and wrap that tag in around the fiberglass on the bed net and just pull it through. Then you take your ridge line and loop it around here and just cinch it down with that slip knot. And zip your bed net shut. Get everything out of the way. And as you can see, it doesn't leave any gap at all right there. If it does, it's very small. So it's going to keep mosquitoes out. So that's how I do my Ridgeline mod. It's easy, it's simple, it's quick. Didn't have to do any cutting or any sewing. I uh, just took an old pole clip, put it to good use. My final thoughts on the Katoma system are that it is a very good system for lightweight camping. Four and a half pounds, that's pretty lightweight to what we'd normally be carrying tent-wise out in the woods. It seems fairly rugged to what we've used it for so far. The color is amazing. Coyote brown, no better color on the planet. And when you, when you get out in the woods with that thing, light reflects off water, it mixes with trees, and it almost turns into more of an olive color. So it really does blend in. I think that it is a good system to use if you're going to be gone for three to seven days, I would say. Now, the only reason I say that is if I'm gone for one to two days on a recon mission, going scouting out places, I'm carrying the USMC IBC, the improved Vivi, Vivi cover. I'm carrying a poncho liner and I'm carrying a poncho. That's keeping my sleeping system fairly small. It's leaving me a lot of room for food and ammo. Now just scouting around at the river, might not need too much ammo, so I might could be a little more, I might could open my sleeping system ideas up a little bit for that. But in a, a bug out kind of scenario, you're gonna want something a little more comfortable. You're gonna be staying out in the woods a little longer. So you're going to want more space, you're going to want somewhere that you can kind of live in for a little while, you know, kind of set up and uh, pack back up and move. And something a little more than just a bivy and a poncho. I love this system so far, or what, we, what I've seen of it. Out of five, I would definitely give it a five out of five. And the five out of five rating is after you've seam sealed the floor and after you've made sure that your seam tape on your rain fly is nice and seated. This is a great system. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. As always, may the wings of liberty never lose a feather. And God bless.